close to 20 years, I was a writer and producer at CNN. Most recently, I produced medical specials. These were on topics uh, as varied as things like sleep, um, longevity, genius. Um, we talked to President Clinton on a, for a special on, on heart disease, which is one on uh, toxic chemicals in the environment. Uh, in April, I was laid off. So I want to talk about generating momentum when the wheels come off. Because when you lose your job, when you're laid off, your career, your professional life, really comes to a sudden and complete stop. And you lose a little bit about, of your identity. Think about it. When you're introduced to someone, you know, before the layoff, you know, this is David, he's a TV producer. Afterwards, you know, this is David, he's a, he's a what? So how do you fill in that blank? How do you get your professional life moving again? I'd like to talk a little bit about what I've done to get back on track and how I've learned that the real question is, what track? First of all, I had no idea I was going to lose my job. There was no warning at all, just a meeting maker in my inbox one day for a conference call that afternoon. Uh, I didn't even realize the head of HR was on the call till moments before I dialed in. And as I sat there at my desk with the phone in my ear, I really felt numb, frozen, as I got the news that my job was being eliminated. It really, uh, it's, it's quite, a, uh, quite an experience to have, to have your job go in an instant. And, you know, I wasn't the only person that got the word that day. Dozens of others heard that they were losing their job. And uh, I was good at my job, but so were a lot of others that lost their jobs. It wasn't really about the quality of our work. It was part of a bigger network restructuring Executives just decided that they were going to start buying documentaries instead of producing them in-house. Uh, and, you know, as someone who's lost their job recently, you know, as a recently laid-off American, we've got plenty of company. There's more than 6 million Americans that have lost their jobs since 2008. And uh, these are people with more than three years of experience. I had close to 20. And the real question for anyone, for me, for anyone else in this unfortunate club is, is uh, what next? You know, because if you don't have that next project, that next assignment, it's really, uh, it's really unsettling. It's, it's frightening because, you know, you've sort of entered this, this uh, professional wilderness, this great unknown. And even when you know that losing your job was not your fault, it feels a lot like failure. So, as I tried to look ahead, I really had trouble thinking straight. You know, uh, I, as I tried to come up with a plan to have a vision for what, what, what I would do next, my thoughts were really clouded by this sort of toxic stew of, of uh, anger and bitterness, of self-doubt, and uh, no surprise, you know, I was lit pretty uh, unfocused and listless, you know, forget about momentum. I was really stuck in neutral. And you wake up, you know, in the day and the, the uh, calendar is a blank slate. There's nothing there. <laughs> it's a vast unknown. I mean, a vast uh, empty space. Uh, really, and there, there's nothing there. You know, it, it took me about a month, but I came to see this this uh, vast expanse of time, not as a kind of an intimidating void, but as an opportunity. A novelist stares down a, a blank page and is forced to create a world. Someone without a job needs to do the same thing. I needed to do the same thing. I needed to create my own world. As Donald Miller suggests in A Million Miles in a Thousand Years, we need to think of ourselves as the protagonists in our own stories. And if you're the protagonist in your own story, you certainly want to be driving the action. You don't want to be passive and carried along by inertia. So uh, once I emerged from this uh, funk, 
I thought, you know, I was tempted to just grab the next thing that came along, to take the first freelance job that came my way and, and just, just to get moving. But I really thought I wanted to do, do it right. I didn't want to make a mistake. And, you know, in NASCAR, the pit crews have a phrase, go slow to go fast. These are the guys that change the tires and refuel the cars in 13 seconds. And they found that if they push it, if they rush, if they try to go fast, they make mistakes. So they have this motto, go slow to go fast. So I decided to sort of take a page out of their playbook and uh, go slow. And you know, also as a white collar worker, like many white collar workers, my pink slip came with a severance. So I had a few months of severance so I could at least afford to go slow for a little while. Um, so the reason I really wanted to go slow was I wanted to find, to really think about what my ikigai was. And ikigai is a Japanese word that means sense of purpose. And I wanted to think about what was my sense of purpose? What did I find meaningful in my work? You know, what animates me in the most literal sense? What makes me most alive? Uh, the Kenyan uh, marathoner, Wesley Career champion marathoner has it, puts it this way, if you run without any reason, you're just chasing the wind. So I think it's probably a good exercise for anyone, even if you've got a job, to think about, you know, do you find that job meaningful? Does it give you a sense of purpose? Does it make you excited to wake up in the morning and go to work? And if not, I guess if you've heard from other speakers here, you know, maybe you should think about another, looking for another job. Uh, also, I think ikigai, or sense of purpose, I think it's I don't think it's genetic or immutable. I think it evolves over time, and I think certainly I think mine has also. Um, so when I thought about what I really love, I thought it's it's really meeting people and asking questions and hearing their stories. You know, just regular folks with uh, rich and varied past. I think our, there's an amazing similarity between our hopes and dreams. Uh, even you know the media really focuses on conflict, on divisiveness, on taking people and putting them in well-worn categories and placing them in stories that sort of follow well-worn themes. But really the truth is we're far more alike than we are different. And even before I lost my job, I tried to kind of look at this creatively. I worked with a photographer named Wissam al -Badri. We had people look right at the camera and think of a word that was very important to them. And then you know, we put it on these cards, so you had to flip over the card to see what they were thinking. And I was really struck by the, sort of the, the, the decency of, of people. And a lot of people said things like family and gratitude. This uh, gentleman, Curtis McCarthy, was on death row in Oklahoma for more than 20 years. And you really think that his word could be something like you know, revenge or something. But his word was uh, compassion. So, when I think about moving forward, generating momentum, I uh, decided that I wanted to find people with compelling stories, with inspiring stories, empowering stories, and share those stories with others. And I've sort of I've generated momentum, you know, with that knowledge, I've generated momentum in these three ways. Last month, I organized something in Lincoln called True Stories Live, where I recruited um, folks with different experiences and backgrounds take the stage and talk about, tell stories in front of a live audience. And uh, the night was a sellout, which really, for me, confirmed the power of the, of the story. I'm also working with a Lincoln heart surgeon named Bob Oakes, who has an incredible story. Bob is uh, the son of a hotel maid and auto mechanic. He's, uh, he was a self-described nothing kid from the wrong side of the tracks who uh, dropped out of high school and then underwent this incredible transformation and became an academic star. He went to Harvard Medical School and did his residency at Stanford. Finally, I've started a production company and I'm working on a documentary about a Mennonite community in Colorado that takes care of the inmates, uh, the kids, infants and, and uh, newborns and infants of prisoners in the state's prison. And you know, it's, it's amazing the, the simple gift that these Mennonites are giving has really changed the lives of these women and their kids, many of whom would have been, uh, would have been wards of the state if not for this program. So 
I guess in the six months since I've been laid off, you know, I don't think I'm up to full speed, but I think I'm generating momentum, and I feel as though I've uh, really found uh, my sense of purpose. I'd like to close with a quote from the Portuguese writer and Nobel laureate, Jose Saramago. Every man has his own patch of earth to cultivate. It's important that he digs deep. Thank you.